Hi everyone, my name is Angie and this is me, my Niger Habitat. The, the material for today's project are all here. So we are building my first PC, uh, my first custom PC. Um, I've always been buying pre-built computers. Uh, so today we're building my first customized one. Um, and this whole thing all started from one custom keycap. So uh, my colleague introduced me to a keycap during our staycation and it turned into a custom keyboard and now it's a full-fledged computer. So the full spec list, um, I'll put it here. Um, but basically I'm trying to go for a white build but I kind of gave up halfway because it's just so hard trying to get a white GPU in this current market um it's hard enough to get a, a graphics card in itself it's even harder to get it get it in a white in a specific color uh so let's start with the unboxing so i managed to get a 3070 this is the aeros master um i got it at a decent price actually it was still marked up but i think it was about almost twice its standard msrp but compared to the prices of like a 3080 and a 3090, this was decent, <laughs> decent. Uh, so there's the GPU for the CPU. We have the AMD Ryzen 7. I've got the 5800X. Um, got it in the tray version because I don't think I'll be keeping any of my boxes. Like I have too much clutter at home. I need to declutter. Uh, so I got it in the tray version, saved me like 20, 30 dollars. Um, yeah, so that's GPU and motherboard. We have the Gigabyte X570S Aerial G. For cooler, I've got this AIO, the NZXT Kraken Z53. I got this before the RGB version came out, which has a white version of this AIO. Um, contemplated if I should sell this and get the white one, but at the same time, it was a top up that. I would not benefit from because in the end I'm not gonna be using the fans that came with the AIO so decided I would just not get change it into white and the only two black parts in my computer will basically be the AIO and the graphics card because everything else I I think I managed to get everything else in white for the PSU you can't really see for the PSU we have the C Sonic. GX1000, Focus GX1000. Um, got this because, yep, it comes in white. Um, and also, uh, 1000 watt is an overkill for most, if not for most computers. 1000 watt is an overkill. Um, for my build, it is an overkill as well. I do not need this much power, but the efficiency rating, um, I. I realized for this particular model is it peaks at about 50 to 60, 55 to 60 percent so which is roughly in the range of where my computer will end up being in so I guess that worked out well <laughs> I bought this in the beginning purely because it was white yeah and then for the fans we have the Lian Li uni fan the SL120 model um i like this because i didn't like the i think it was the al one or the ul one whereby the fan itself lights up i didn't really like that i find that too much so this one with like an accent lighting this is like the kind of feel that i would go for uh, so i went for this version instead and this will be the fan that we're going to be using throughout the entire pc i've got like three boxes of them i i think i bought too many but we'll see and then for RAM, we have the Corsair Vengeance RGB Pro SL. So I went for the thinner ones, um, partially because I kind of like this design a little bit more. Um, I'm using AIO, so it shouldn't matter too much on how high my RAM sticks are. But I prefer this design, looks a little bit cleaner compared to the, the, the standard, the non-SL version. This is two 16 gigabyte sticks. Um, so I have the option of upgrading my RAM into a 64GB. Uh, and then for memory, we have 
uh, these are both Samsung disc. So I have the 980 for my NVMe and the 870 Evo for my SSD. So they are both one terabyte. Um, I typically like to split up my stuff this way. So all my softwares, the operating systems will sit on one disc and my storage will sit on a separate disc. Uh, so in my current PC, which is quite old, uh, my everything else sits on the SSD and all my storage is on a hard drive, which is a bit slow, although I'm kind of used to the speed. So this will be a big difference, um, definitely. And last but not least, in my case, because I work in media <laughs> and now I'm doing this like video thing like everything is run on a pc i'm recording on a bmx um so i got myself a backlink quad hdmi recorder this is by black magic now you can find the same thing under elgato it's called the camlink pro um it's 200 dollars cheaper but um i okay i don't know enough of elgato's hardware to wanna Put in $500 with the potential that it might break in the future. Um, I do have a Stream Deck. Okay, but the Stream Deck, it's a, it's a macro pad essentially. It's cheap enough to waste $150, <laughs> $200. But something like this is going to sit inside my computer, which I probably just will not touch. I, I want something that is reliable, that has good service, like RMA options if it were to break. Uh, so, which is why I went for Blackmagic. Um, this is a brand of equipment that we use for work as well, a lot. Um, a lot of media professionals nowadays use Blackmagic because it's, 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 still, it's priced in a, like a slightly more prosumer range. So it's cheap and it works. Um, although, I still wouldn't feel that it lasts as long as professional hardware like Panasonic, Sony, um, but for like prosumer usage, Blackmagic is quite reliable so far. Um, their deck links, their entire deck link series are actually quite good. Uh, we have a lot of people using, we have a lot of professional friends using them in their build. Uh, so this is the Blackmagic Quad HDMI recorder. Uh, the slight problem here being, this one requires PCIe Gen 3 8 lane. Um, the last PCIe slot on my motherboard. It's a PCIe Gen 4, but four lanes. So I went to do a lot of research. Like I got this before I realized that I, I made a mistake. So um, I went to research about it. So and the people who were in a similar situation as me um, with like a PCIe Gen 4 four lane slot with but a PCIe Gen 3 eight lane card. Um, they all mentioned that there wasn't any noticeable performance issues. Like everything worked as normal as it should uh, on this card. And the thing is this this particular card supports 4K, which I will not need for like the foreseeable two or three years. So uh, I guess that's why I need the eight lane. I don't know. Uh, <laughs> don't know enough about PCI. Just I tried researching into it, it just goes over my head. But anyway, uh, so we're gonna try to fix this in and see how it goes. Um, currently what I have going on is I've been using the USB stick HDMI capture card which works for my frontal camera, it's a GoPro. But if I want to capture a screen, for some strange reason, there will be latency, there will be like lag, um, it's jittery, uh, and at the same time, my current PC is not powerful enough anymore to support all the peripherals that I, I plug into it. Uh, so when I do try and do a live stream, um, I get uh, glitches across my screen. So that I think that came from like a performance issue from my CPU and GPU. So we're gonna put this in and see how it goes. And then finally, the chassis. Um, I've got the Lian Li. O11M Mini. Um, I wanted to get the O11D Mini, but I didn't like the fact that we couldn't take an ATX sized PSU. Um, at the same time, I 
wanted a more like a computer with better airflow and the D mini has like a glass panel in front um, so I that was what kind of stopped me from getting that and I, I'm glad I did I'm glad I waited because the air mini came out shortly afterwards it was delayed by like two months which kind of stopped my project for like a yeah, a good two months, two, three months. But now it's finally out. They actually managed to fix the manufacturing problem. Uh, I'm glad they put it on hold actually to fix it because like the, the performance increased. The performance increased by a lot after they fixed that front panel issue. So with the chassis, I actually got myself custom cables as well. <laughs> I got them off China, so they're not that expensive. But let's unbox everything. So the first one and probably the most straightforward one that we shall start with is the motherboard. Um, let's fit the CPU in. This looks so pretty. It's heavy. Now in all the videos that I've seen about like building your own computer, they'd always say just take out everything from the box because you don't want to have to like keep opening it up again. And the most important thing, take out the manual. Like this is, this is the one thing in life that you definitely need the manual for. <laughs> so, yeah, we have the motherboard. Um, these are everything that came with the motherboard. So we have all the cables, which I probably wouldn't really use other than like a, a few of the specific ones. Um, because most of my cables are custom made. So I think some of these are like controller cables, which we will need. Wi-Fi stick? What is this? Wait, what? Is this the Wi-Fi fin? I mean, it looks like it. It looks like a mini um, PlayStation. Stuck tower. Let's figure this out. that confused me is if I'm not using the other M.2 slots do I need to remove these stickers? <laughs> Should I? I mean Okay, on the last slot there is a Wi-Fi card so I, I guess it helps if I remove it <laughs> I'm confused You know what? I'm gonna, I'm gonna fit in the center one without removing it. Okay, next is the CPU. Now, you wanna look for that golden triangle, which is over here. Um, on the top, there is like a little marking at the corner. So look for that and look for a similar marking on the socket itself, which is over here. So just line that up. Just sit in nicely. Uh, do not brute force. There are many, many pins at the bottom and that if you brute force it, you might damage something and this whole thing is basically gone. So do not brute force any of this. Um, it should just sit in nicely by itself if you got everything lined up and then just lock it in place. That's it. It's a lot simpler than I thought when I first thought about building a computer. Um, in any case, it this particular one I got comes with a little bit of um, thermal paste. Um, with the CPU, but I don't think we will need it because the cooler comes with it pre-applied as well. Um, but we're just going to keep this aside first in case we do need it in the future. What else can we install? I think we can install the RAM 
finding all the small parts that I can do first before going to like the big stuff like the AIO and everything else. Now I doubt those of you watching this video are first time PC builders but if you are, uh, most motherboard comes with 4 lane of RAM slots. In reality, depends on the motherboard you have, you only have 2 channels. So they are basically 2 lanes per channel. Uh, you need to figure out which are the lanes that you should install them in first. So in my case, I actually have a marking on the motherboard telling me that these two are for channel A, these two are for channel B, and I should install on this this lane and this lane first. So in this case, this that's where my RAM stick is going to go. So if you are installing yours, your RAM for the first time, um, these are some things you need to look out for. So once you have your RAM sticks, they have a little notch in the center. So just line that up. Then just press down gently on top. And it should lock in place. The latch should lock it in place. So, so nerve wracking. I'm so scared I break something. Okay, so this is actually relatively done. These are about everything that we can do on a motherboard now before connecting everything else. So the most important thing in a motherboard manual is this. The layout as well as the block diagram. So this will tell you where it's connected to what. Now the things that we will need to take note um, after installing all the smaller stuff is actually the motherboard layout. So now this is the part where we go into the all the small connectors along the edge of your motherboard which just confuses me to no end. Um, but basically they tell you where you need to connect what to. So I guess this is it for the motherboard side. I think the next step will be moving this into the chassis. Oh uh, very scared to handle this with my bare hands. Okay, you know what? I'm just gonna put you this way and move you elsewhere. Okay, now here we have the O11 Air Mini. <laughs> it's sitting on its original carton box because why not? Um it's it's definitely smaller than a standard like PC chassis, which is why it's called the Mini. But at the same time, it's still bigger than expected. How you uh, take things out is there are these thumb screws at the back. So loosen that and the top panel just slides out. And then the side glass panel will just slide up and out. So you can see this like little notches at the bottom for you to uh, for you to slot it in place. Uh, so this is slide this is the side panel. A little bit iffy with the side panel because it's glass. Yeah. And then the front panel, same thing. Slide it upwards and it'll just come out. Uh, so the difference between this new version that's out on the market and the prototype that was meant that was supposed to release in September is that they've increased the size of the air holes the pores what's they call what, what do they call it again they call it a specific something but I, I can't remember what it is um, but basically they increase the size of it increase the uh, reduce the gap in between the pores um, so now the air flow is supposed to be a lot better and you you can feel it like if I were to breathe into my hand I can actually feel it then we have the rest of the case it comes with three stock clean leaf fans which we are swapping out for the ones that I got these are 100 these are 140 millimeters I think um, the one we got is 120 so the ones in front we're definitely swapping it out so the front ones what you have to do if they're sitting in this bracket um, which are held in by 
four small screws. It's actually four like small screws in the front. So just remove the four of them and this bracket, this whole thing should slide right out. The screws are held on unnecessarily tight. Yeah, it's bad. <laughs> this screw is gone. This is definitely gone. Like the screws are tightened so much. Well, in any case, um, after you remove the screws that is holding the fence in place, this whole thing should just slide out like this. That's it. So we shall take this out and then replace it with the SL120 that we have. Now, the special thing about this uni fence is this quick uh, is this latch connector thing that they have so these are the cables that comes with and if you want to like install two or three or up to four of them in a row uh, you don't need to like run an individual cable for every fan they latch onto each other in like a daisy chain so you can actually use that if you are mounting like multiple fans in a row. So ideally, if you were mounting this um, together as is, you just need to link them up, latch and just slot them in place. And then just run one cable for these two fans. But in our case, I don't think they will fit. They might actually. Okay, let's try. Because if they do fit, it will make things a lot easier for us. Okay, so it actually works is fantastic for us. Um, now what we need to do is grab this cable, right, and this one basically just have to latch in place at the top. Yeah. And then these two cables just have to go through, which is something that I should have done before I screwed the fence in. Um, look through here. And this one will go around the back to the controller. Then this whole thing goes back in here. It just sit like this. Um, Logically, you wouldn't need to fit the screws back in because it's uh, it sits in like a latch but to keep it in place, we'll put it back and I will remove the two screws that's already stripped. Back panel, same thing, held in with two thumb screws. And just slide out. So the bottom, the back panel has like these two mesh at the side and this strip of solid in the center. That's because this tray um, can be used to do cable management as well as uh, it acts as an SSD tray. Um, and then on this side, we have the hard disk tray which we are removing because we are not installing any hard disk. Um, and then this can be added as uh, extra airflow for your radiators. Um, over here is for the PSU. And here is another set of hard disk storage, which we're going to use this because this is not removable. We're going to use this to hold the um, fan controllers. But the thing that you need to be careful about this particular slot here is there's a thumb screw on top. But at the same time, if you remove this thumb screw, you're not able to take this tray out because there's another screw 
at the bottom. Um, this is something that everyone has been complaining about. Like, if you're gonna make a thumb screw, like, why not do it both ways? Or just remove the bottom one because it's like a latch system in any case. I mean, I don't really understand why this is necessary, but I'm also not the designer of this case, so, you know. So this case comes with a bottom, like, filter, dust filter. This is the only dust filters you have in the entire case. Um, the idea is the pores on the panels should be big enough to let in air, but small enough to trap dust. So this is the only filter you have, which is on the bottom. Um, the way I want to plan my fan is I have front two intake fans I have the bottom intake fans um, There's an output fan at the back and output fans on top Which... I'm not sure if it creates a strange turbulence Logically it shouldn't Like air goes in this way and out this way So logically it shouldn't <laughs> Um, yeah, it's not like traffic, like air goes through the path of least resistance. So if there's intake here, it just find a way to go out. Um, the thing is the side one, the side one might be the strange one. So I have this strange, like, I wouldn't call it a pet peeve, uh, but it's something that I do, which like with Velcros, right? I always keep the fluffy side out um, because if you keep the the hard side, why is my velcro? So like if, if you keep the hard side of the velcro out, it's gonna stick to anything and everything that it can stick to. Versus if you keep the fluffy side out, it collects dust, yes, but it doesn't stick to anything else. Um, so this is just like a thing that I do with velcros. So I'm thinking if I should just fit in the PSU now. I think we should fit in the motherboard first, right? We've got the motherboard back and my table is seriously running out of space. Before we put it into the chassis, we should put we should install the AIO first. Got two more fans. <laughs> I've, been, I've been collecting a lot of fans. Hey, I need to remove. Remove the stock AMD brackets, which I'm guessing is this one. It's the only thing that's here. the radiators we're doing in direct mounting so the long screws and washers <laughs> Okay, one of our last few items, the PSU. One of the most important thing, the graphics card.
So it's been a month. I've been using my PC for a month. Um, my cat straight away took the PC as her new throne. So she's been resting on top of the chassis or whenever she wants to stay near me as I'm on the computer. Um, good thing my top fans are blowing outwards. But I was still worried that you know her fur could go in, which she very well could. Um, so I've put a tray at the top of my um, chassis, which was one of those like old um, chassis trolley kind of tray. So there is like space at the bottom for air flows to, to still go out, and yet it it raises up enough so that she doesn't sit directly on the chassis itself, and it doesn't help that. The Linli O11 Air Mini doesn't have much like filters. Like there's only one filter at the dust filter at the bottom. The front and the top doesn't have any sort of like a dust filter. And in my case, I have a lot of fur. She's like sleeping right here now. <laughs> so uh, she's loving my computer. Um, as you probably saw. Um, when I was building it halfway, she jumped in and claimed it as hers. Shall leave it as that. And the Black Magic deck link seems to be holding up pretty well. I'm recording this thing on my new PC. Um, color looks a bit strange though, like it's a bit more desaturated. Uh, I tried color correcting it, like bare minimum color correction, but still came out a bit like faded. Nothing much changed on my side, like lighting is the same. So not sure why is that, might be just be my GoPro. Um, but yeah, everything seems to be working fine. The ingest for my secondary screen, eh, it's a little bit, there is a little bit of delay. So if I were to put this up, so there is a bit of delay between when I move my mouse and when I see my mouse actually move but it's like a few frames maybe like six seven frames or even lesser than that which is fine um, it shouldn't make that big of a difference when I do need to record my gameplays um, Here comes the girl But yeah, so my computer has been running pretty well um, I didn't do any overclocking I just maxed out my uh, the ability of what I basically just turned on XMP for my RAMs um, That's about it um, The whole build took me about 7 hours So I have like 7 hours of footage to go through while editing this um, which will be fun and now that I have more because I'm, I'm recording a, a post build because I'm recording like a post build um, chatter um, yeah she's enjoying my computer a lot she loves it so it sits on top of it um, when I'm at my computer doing my own thing so she's loving it it's a new favorite place to, to lie on. Like I just see her there randomly in the middle of the day. She's either there or on my chair. 
And I basically customized all the RGB lights to the color that I liked, um, which is blue. I can't get it in that blue that I want, but I guess this works. And I put in the EV display toys that I made in the previous video. Um, so they are lying inside now and it looks like, with the lights, it looks like it's a perfect um, environment for EV to evolve into a Glaceon. Um, it looks really like icy and cold. Um, but yeah, I'm really enjoying this computer. The cable management was a chore. <laughs> yes. So I got custom cables which make them a lot thicker than usual. And this is a mini chassis. There's not a lot of space. Even though they really gave me like ample space for cable management. But it's still not enough space compared to like a mid tower or even a full tower. Everything else, it was quite okay. It was just figuring out where do I run which cable from where. Like the path of the cable, if that makes sense. Uh, so yeah, quite happy with this build. Um, I wanted to fit three fans at the bottom, which I was able to actually. But then when I tried to install the deck link capture card, uh, it kind of got stuck on the bottom fan. So there was not enough clearance for the card to go in. Um, I could still install the card, but it's, I, I don't feel like, I don't feel comfortable leaving the card there with, with the amount of pressure it was putting in the PCIe slot. So I removed one of the bottom fans and now, now it's just running on two fans. Which is okay because I have intake fans on the front and the other side. Um, but then the other problem is because of the deck link cut, I constantly hear this clicking sound coming from the fans. I'm not sure if that's normal because every other fan is so quiet. I ended up using the original fan that came with the Z53 AIO um, because my I saw my radiator at the side, so it's facing, it's drawing air from the outside. So the fans is on the fans are on the back. Or the fans are facing the the side of my chassis, which I don't see, and that side is covered by a mesh panel, so there's no need for like an RGB fan there. Um, and that's the fan that gets really noisy when I start up my PC and when I'm running something that's like graphics intensive. Um, but otherwise, the computer has been pretty silent, pretty quiet, other than the consistent clicking from the deck link. But I guess that can't really be helped. Um, it's like a mini fan that is installed on the card itself for cooling. Uh, so it's not that loud, but it's just there. Mm. The GPU looks a bit heavy, uh, resting just on the PCIe uh, slot and the back with the screws. So I considered getting a PCIe like a support thing. And I do have one, but it's like this piece of acrylic with RGB on it, which I felt was a bit too flashy. I'm not sure if flashy is the right word. I wanted to find something simple, like just like a metal bracket or something. Um, haven't got down to actually finding one that I liked yet. Uh, so currently it's just as is, but this case is so like modular, it's so easy to, to remove parts um, that I would just slot it in when I, when I find the one that I actually like. Uh, so yeah, I've been running this computer for like a month now. Haven't actually done any gaming, but uh, I've been using it just for my day-to-day -day use and recording and editing videos. So it has been running really well so far. Uh, no issues at all. Uh, the best part about building your own computer is I don't get all the nonsense that comes installed with a pre-built PC. Like I have to install my own software. I have to install my own drivers. But most of them is are like taken care of by Windows themselves. When you detect a peripheral that's plugged in, they automatically find a driver for you. You just have to update them, make sure they are up to date. That's about it. I don't get all the other nonsense that comes with a pre-built computer. So I'm enjoying this a lot. Um, one thing that I still can't figure out is I have, I have my NZXT Kraken device and the Lian Li under the safely remove hardware icon. You know, when you have to like safely eject a portable disk, like a thumb drive or SSD or hard disk. Yeah, I have my um, NZXT and, and Lian Li. There's 
listed there. I have no idea what happens if I do click eject. I'm not gonna try. Um, and at the same time, I have my SSD that's installed in the computer, listed as a ejectable drive as well. Uh, I did find a fix for it online, but I just haven't got done with doing it yet. But yeah, that's strange. I don't know how to remove the NZXD and the and the Lian Li. Because they are like fans. Fans and AIO. I don't know why they are listed there. But anyway. Um I'll get that figured out, but I only noticed that like yesterday from recording this portion of my video. So um it's a bit strange. But yeah, I don't think I will ever be able to buy another pre-built computer at this rate. Like I might figure out how to build my own laptop if I ever need a laptop. <laughs> Although I'm a I'm a firm believer of if I need a laptop, I'll go for Apple. If I need a tower, I'm going for Windows. I hope you enjoyed this video. Um, this hopefully is not the last computer that I will build. Hint, hint. But yeah, if you enjoy the kind of content that I put out on my channel, do consider subscribing. Uh, if you enjoyed this video, give me a thumbs up. And I will see you in the next one.